Today we're going to talk about two different areas that make it more difficult to detect if someone's lying. Those are a person's personality and cultural differences that may exist between people. In a meta-analysis, examining individual differences in lie detection, Bond and DiPaolo found that while there's relatively little variation in judges' lie detection accuracy, there are substantial differences in senders' or deceivers' skill at deception. They differentiate sender detectability or transparency from sender credibility. We can try to make ourselves better at detecting deception and try and make deceivers more transparent by looking for the right cues and asking the right questions. However, knowing what makes people appear more credible is another place we can try to detect deception. Some people just look more honest than other people. And why is that? I'm a big fan of the TV show Survivor. If you watch interactions between the cast members on the show as they try and outwit one another, you'll see that some people lie so effortlessly it seems impossible when they later turn to the camera and admit they'd been lying. They might be practiced con artists, but it's probably more likely that they have personality types that lend themselves to a credible demeanor, regardless of whether or not they're even telling the truth. Let's talk about some of those. The first are personality disorders. For example, some people have been shown to be pathological liars, individuals that are diagnosed with personality disorders such as narcissistic, borderline, antisocial, or histrionic personalities tell a lot of undetected lies and become confident or skilled liars. They're extremely self-oriented and use lies to get what they want, including a boost to their typically low self-esteem. The second personality type is introversion or extroversion. Extroverts are sociable people. They like being with others and are attracted to other social people. In contrast, introverts are typically more reserved in social contexts than their extroverted counterparts. Even when controlling for the fact that extroverts interact more with others, extroverts lie more than introverts, but demonstrate fewer cues of deception than introverts. These traits are related to one's sense of public self-consciousness and expressiveness. People with a strong sense of public self-consciousness tend to make less credible impression on others, regardless of whether they're telling the truth or lying, because they're concerned with how they will be perceived by others. In contrast, expressive people exude credibility, regardless of the truth of their assertions, because their expressiveness or spontaneity tends to disarm other individuals and reduce suspicion. Another personality trait is one's attachment style. According to Bowlby's famous books, Attachment and Loss, attachment theory proposes that individuals have internal working models of self and others, which develop from their relationship with their parents or their primary caretakers as children. Attachment styles are distinguished on two dimensions, avoidance and anxiety. These styles affect how often individuals lie, especially in romantic relationships. Avoidant attachment styles are based on a fear that the other individual will not be available and supportive, whereas anxious attachment styles produce low self-esteem in an individual, as well as jealousy and fear of abandonment. Avoidant individuals and anxious individuals lie more often in romantic relationships than non-avoidant and non-anxious individuals, but for different reasons. Avoidant individuals use deception to keep others at a safe distance, whereas anxious individuals use deception so that they will be more desirable to their partner and they can regulate their partner's interest in them. Machiavellianism is a personality trait that is frequently associated with deception. Liars are typically viewed as crafty, selfish, and manipulative. Manipulators tend to come across as more confident, relaxed, and dominant in conversations, and they're usually more popular. For example, People high in Machiavellianism show little concern for conventional morality and openly admit that they will lie, cheat, and manipulate others to get what they want. Similarly, social adroitness is a concept related to manipulativeness and the construct of Machiavellianism. However, it's more subtle and less negative connotations than Machiavellianism. Those high in Machiavellianism and those who are socially adroit tend to tell more self-serving lies find lying more natural and less cognitively taxing, and feel less guilty when they lie, which makes them more difficult to detect. Another trait is known as self-monitoring, which is the way that an individual can control his or her expressive behavior. People high in self-monitoring tend to be more self-conscious because they want to make sure their appearance is appropriate and controlled in front of others. If a person can control his or her behavior, that person may be able to be a more successful liar, but self-conscious deceivers are overly concerned with being socially appropriate in public, and thus become verbally less fluent, 
engage in less eye contact, make fewer hand and head movements when deceiving, than the less self-conscious communicators. This gives them the appearance of being deceptive, even if they're not. Individuals with different personality types may render different cues when communicating, and the transparency of their deception may vary depending on their personality type. Knowing that personality can affect deception can help you understand why some people appear more honest than others, regardless of their actual truthfulness. Now let's examine some cross-cultural differences in deception. Hofstede defined culture as the collective programming of the mind that distinguishes the members of one group or category from people of other groups. Cultures share a language, history, political and economic background that binds them together. Nations are often used as a proxy for culture, and many cross-cultural researchers examine differences between the people of different countries. One of the problems in studying deception cross-culturally is that people may define deception in different ways. Americans prefer directness, but other cultures prefer indirectness, and beating around the bush would be seen here as deceptiveness. Sometimes people from other cultures are using indirectness to be polite, but not deceptive. The implications of this body of research into cross-cultural differences suggest that it may be more difficult to detect deception across cultures than within a culture, and cross-cultural interactions make a sender less transparent. If the deceiver and the receiver differ even in their definitions of what constitutes deception, then the sender and the receiver are not communicating in ways that make it easy to detect deception when it's occurring. Another fact that's difficult to detect deception across cultures is that we tend to distrust people who are different from ourselves. In addition, depending on our level of familiarity with the other culture, we may have more difficulty reading facial expressions than reading those of our own culture. One possible cultural difference that may exist is that members of the same culture are better at emotional recognition than reading those facial expressions of another culture. It may also be that since vocalic cues and linguistic cues tend to be some of the most diagnostic cues to deception, it's too difficult to detect deception when people are not speaking in their native language. Perhaps uncertainty and tension, two of our diagnostic patterns, are already elevated when speaking with a foreigner in another language. Too little research exists to form conclusions for deception detection, but it's possible that deception is more difficult to detect when dealing with intercultural encounters than same cultural encounters. We can imagine two possible outcomes. On the one hand, deceivers might be more opaque to the receiver from a different culture, but the receiver would be aware of this and appropriately suspicious during the interaction, thus making deception more difficult. Alternatively, a deceiver from a similar culture would be more transparent to a receiver from a similar culture, and the receiver should be less suspicious, thus facilitating deception. Future research should examine culture to investigate what makes a sender more or less transparent in cross-cultural or intracultural communications. Today we've examined two different facets of communication that might hinder our ability to detect deception. Personality differences such as extroversion and self-monitoring, and cultural differences that highlight definitional differences and the difficulty in detecting deception when someone's from another culture. They make it all the more important to address deception detection while taking individual and cultural differences into account.